Hello, everyone. So it's time to start. We are ready. Uh, first of all, let's check the connection. Please type something in the chat if everyone sees and hears me well. Good. So, okay, seems like everything okay. Uh, hello, everyone, once again, I'm glad to see everyone. My name is Alina and I'm Regional Development Manager at Galileo Sky. Welcome to our webinar, Galileo Sky, your advanced device to secure your business. Today, we will talk about the security solutions that companies all over the world develop on the basis of Galileo Sky tracking devices. This topic is special as this webinar is dedicated to a special event events. I will talk about it um, just in just a few minutes. In the meantime, let's keep some intrigue and discuss a few organizational moments. First of all, today I'm not alone. My colleague will lead the presentation together with me. Please meet uh, Dmitry, an engineer of our support team. Some of, one, yeah. some of you know him as the face of our YouTube channel. Dmitry, can you hear me? Hello, it's nice to see you. Good, good. So, and as usual, the webinar will take about one hour. Uh, we will send the, the link. We will send the records, the link with the records to all participants as usual. So you may share it with your colleagues who couldn't join us today. And we have the chat where you can share your thoughts and ideas during the webinar. Please welcome. And it's important that near to the chat button, there is a button for the question sections. Please type all the questions uh, appearing during the presentation there. Dmitry and I will answer all of them when the presentation ends. Well, let's go forward and start with the news um, of our next events, I am pleased to announce that the Galileo Sky team is going to attend Secrets of Africa exhibition, which will be held in Johannesburg from the 31st of May to the 2nd of June. Securex is a leading African security trade show. It brings together thousands of professionals and traditionally fleet management systems take part there. My colleagues and I will uh, present features and technologies that help to develop monitoring system ensure, to ensure driver safety and assets and cargo protection. Welcome to visit the Galileo Sky booth to explore opportunities of Galileo Sky tracking devices or even just to say hi personally. It will be a pleasure for us. And today on the Expo Eve, we will discuss how programmable GPS devices are applied in security systems um, all over the world. We will consider standard security systems from the point of view of their advantages and disadvantages. We will show how the EasyLogic technology can help to customize the security system and how it's applicable in different tasks from people identification access settings to assets remote control. And we will surely show several interesting use cases from our partners. Dimitri also, will also show examples of real EasyLogic algorithms on our configurator software. So we believe uh, the, this webinar will be interesting not only from the points of your business development, but, but also from the technical side. So, and let's start our presentation with the most widespread solution, ready-made security system. Now the market is saturated with a large number of professional security products, there are many ready-to-use systems. Some of them specialize in car security, some of them specialize in house protection. And I'm sure that many of you actively use such systems in your business. They have a clear principle of work and installation and are very convenient for maintenance. However, sometimes it's, it happens that they are not enough. 
The fact is that such standard template products are very familiar to bugglers and unfortunately it's not very difficult for a professional hacker to bypass or hack a standard security system. So, how to minimize risks of hacking in this case? How to create an obstacle for bugglers so that they cannot get around your security system? We can try to customize it. It's possible to create a unique security system with your unique scenario of work. In this case, not a single bugler will know about its working principle, which means such that such a system can be more reliable. Easy logic and it can be done with easy logic technology. This is an exclusive technology to program Galileo sky tracking devices with simple drag and drop algorithms or script writing, depending on your programming skills. Using it, you may set up various reactions of the tracker to different events, and as a result, you can program the device working automatically, automatically in different conditions. For example, Let's imagine uh, we, that we need to control trucks uh, which are not allowed to travel outside some, outside some areas, like a road or a production site. For this task, we can create an algorithm with, which will check um, the, if a truck is located inside the specific GFN, the specific GFNs. If it's not, the tracker will send an alarm to a dispatcher or even cut, cut the engine. We also can set up additional conditions to block the engine safely after checking the speed and motion status in order to avoid some crash, some accidents. So, well, the functional opportunities are really wide and often limited only by our imagination. For convenience, uh, today we are, focus, we are focusing on three popular directions of tasks. The first one is people identification and settings of access conditions. Control. The next one is control of driver behavior and driving style. And the last uh, set of features is dedicated to movement control uh, together with the uh, monitoring of operation conditions. So, and to be more specific, let's consider how each um, functional direction can be implemented in more details and examples. And so uh, let's begin with the access control and access scenarios that can be created with these logic algorithms. So pair drivers with vehicles, so only an authorized person can open doors or start engine, the engine. Give access by different conditions, by ID cards, depending on a GFNs or schedule. For example, restrict access to cars and equipment after the end of the working day. And block the access only when all conditions are met. That means you can combine different access conditions into one algorithm for higher protection. Or even create, upload uh, a few separate algorithms to your tracker, it doesn't matter. Associate events with people and control who's responsible. Here we can set up identification and take a photo or send on notifications at the moment, each, um, each time when a person comes in or starts driving, or create any other scenario depending on your task. Our engineers are ready to always ready to help you to create to help you to create your structure of your algorithm structure, your own scenario of work. And of course, when we are speaking about access control, we cannot miss available identification options. Here, everything is individual as well. The identification system can, cre can be created with I button keys, with uh, BLE tags or print finger scanning. Or we may not use uh, additional devices at all. For instance, the access can be approved after the incoming call from a relevant telephone number. 
for this purpose, all the itself, all all the required uh, numbers should be recorded into the tracker memory. Afterwards, uh, they will be ident identified by the tracker automatically and fixed in wrappers. Additionally, we can create groups of corporate numbers, numbers and assign an appropriate access level to each one. Another example. Um, it's possible to create an algorithm of uh, of algorithm of actions that um, so that when the driver comes to the car, the tracker will recognize the MAC address of his or her smartphone via Bluetooth and then unlock doors and engine or engine. According to the same principle, standard Bluetooth tags and beacons are used and. Uh, one of our good partners from Greece use, uses uh, these solutions to control doors and hatches on motorboats. For this task, uh, they install Galileo Sky7X devices with, with Bluetooth support and blue pack beacons uh, produced by Ella Innovation. I believe that uh, some of you sh sh should know these, uh, br these brands of uh, Bluetooth tags and identification readers from France. So, and I think now it's time to give the floor to Dmitri so that he could show you how uh, IDs can be recognized to be the easy logic algorithms. Dmitri, okay. could you please Thank say you. the word? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, now at the screen we can see uh, the simple algorithm which was actually used and in uh, this algorithm we changing the state of uh, device output uh, which is actually connect connected to relay which manipulates the uh, vehicle itself and uh, we with this uh, simple algorithm we are checking uh, information in the uh, device Bluetooth text uh, in case uh, that we uh, see correct uh, identification number in the Bluetooth tag, we uh, change the device output state and uh, open relay or uh, disable relay in, relay in case uh, <clears throat> that we can't see uh, the pro proper identification mark. I think uh, now it's appropriate time to show you a little bit our uh, Bluetooth scanner uh, to explain you how we can actually read the information from different Bluetooth devices. Uh, so please give me a second, I will share my screen. Uh, yep, uh, I think now you should see uh, my configuration software. So uh, in settings we can see a Bluetooth uh, scanner page. And when we start scanning devices, uh, we see all equipment that is, is available in Bluetooth area. Uh, so uh, when we found our uh, Bluetooth text, in my case, it's a uh, fuel level sensor, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we actually can uh, choose one of parameters that is interesting for us and apply uh, this parameter to the Bluetooth tag. So it's simple like this. We just apply settings, and after that, in Bluetooth Tech Zero, uh, this information is available for us. So uh, after that, we can use this information uh, in software or in easy logic algorithms. <clears throat> so, uh, okay, let's return to the script. As you can see, uh, in the script, we just uh, checking the information in. Uh, Bluetooth tag and if, if this information corresponds to the data that we are searching for, uh, we uh, go to the true part of the algorithm and change the uh, device outputs. It's a simple algorithm which is easy to do. Uh, you can do this algorithm easily with uh, easy logic and solve uh, such security tasks uh, if it's necessary. Uh, again, you can uh, create much more detailed, uh, much more complicated algorithms. Uh, it depends on your task. Uh, so I think <laughs> that's all for now. Uh, thank you, Dimitri. Yeah, thank you. And it also should be mentioned that uh, trackers allow to keep uh, up to 64 Bluetooth tags in the memory. Uh, it can be about uh, one parameter from uh, 64 sensors, actually, or just uh, 64 sensor uh, parameters from the same, from the one sensor. So everything depends uh, on the information which should be monitored by your tasks. So, well, we are moving uh, on to control the driving behavior and driving style. 
On the slide, we have tried to collect the most popular examples of how tracking devices can assist to control driving safety, to improve uh, driving style, to improve uh, driving safety and protection of both people and cargo. So make every driver performance visible and maintain discipline with regular reports, driving statistics and driver's rates. Monitor seat belts, headlights, turn signals, speed and other important parameters provided in the CAN bus of a car uh, or from the or with using of built-in sensors of a car or uh, external professional sensor does that and detect harsh uh, acceleration brake turns as well as strikes with the built-in accelerometer no need any additional sensors here set up speed limits for dif different speed limits for different roads with trackers supporting work with GF fences uh, i will share about these requirements uh, a little bit later uh, create real-time alerts for drivers via SMS, LED, buzzer sounds or audio so that they could correct their driving style immediately or notice a malfunction in time. Similarly, alerts and, and details about aggressive driving can be sent to the monitoring software. Then, in compliance with safety recommendations, of course, the tracker can turn off the ignition in order to prevent accidents or maybe stop fuel supply. It's also dependent on your security requirements inside your company or of requirements of your customer. Additionally, it should be mentioned that Galileo Sky Trackers are integrated with a few brands of professional advanced driver assistant systems, ADAS, like Movon products, for example. Such systems allow to control not only the driving style, but also the drive, driver fatigue and maybe driver behavior like smoking, sleeping, etc. And in order to not waste the time, we move on to the last and the largest stack of functions for monitoring of both the location and operation conditions. Here, a combination of basic settings from on the one side and programmable capabilities on the other side allows us to set up um, maybe endless number of scenarios for remote control of various types of equipment, not only vehicles. It's maybe about stationary, specific stationary assets like generators or maybe heavy machinery. Doesn't matter. First of all, it's it's about the work with the CAN bus. All Galaxy tracking devices have uh, interfaces to connect the CAN bus of vehicles or machinery and then parse it. So it's not about ready to use solutions, but it's about uh, parsing the CAN bus and reading it. And when we do it, we can receive all the information which a vehicle manufacturer or machinery manufacturer provided in their CAN bus. So it's a, it's a, it may be about a huge list, uh, a really huge list of parameters. It can be about customized CAN protocols. So our devices work individually, which one, which, with which one, if it might be useful, if it might be needed, we could share more details about our features to work with the canvas. Just let me know in the chat and I could contact you tomorrow or this week when it's convenient. Additionally, additional examples of work with the canvas is that we can extract engine hours from the canvas and compare it with speed and location changing. This way we can determine the idling time and then, then eliminate um, misuse of machinery. Some of our partners actively use uh, this scenario to control idling time for some uh, for, for heavy machinery for some agricultural customers. It's very popular feature there. To develop the security solution for logistics, we can add extra equipment to our monitor system to control transportation conditions. So various temperature and humidity sensors or refrigerator controllers for cold chain, for example, various weight sensors, tire pressure management systems, professional lock for trailers, photo cameras, uh, motion sensors, everything you want you can everything you want can be integrated and connected. And uh, um, 
it's possible to notify the dispatcher, dispatchers about accidents and authorized authorized stops or roads uh, deviations. So we can create a J fences uh, where vehicles can move uh, freely, uh, free without restrictions, and where dr some driving limitation exists, and then control them. The collection and storage of data are processed inside the tracker, so the most of tasks can be executed on board without server additional server connection. And as a result, a solution will work uh, even without a stable JSM connection. On the software, you will just uh, receive the full reports about all about all staff actions, about all uh, about all events that happens. Uh, happens with the tracker and with the vehicles where it is installed. And uh, with this, uh, uh, I would like to finish the theoretical parts of our presentation. I go to and go to an example of a real monitoring system that combines both driving style uh, features for driving style control that I, I described and control over the operation and the movements of cars. One of our key partners from Kazakhstan implemented a very interesting project for control of credit and leasing cars. Uh, the, the case is that um, the task is that local Toyota and Lexus dealership faced an issue when they need to sell to sell cars to clients with not perfect credit history and as a solution they decided to create um, a system which allow control which allows control of um, car operation conditions to plan and control maintain create an alert uh, system for accidents and theft attempts and of course provide an opportunity to block a car remotely in case if uh, the payment schedule is interrupted by by clients and as a result dealership could uh, receive uh, an opportunity to control over clients who don't who don't fulfill obligations or violate the agree agreement conditions for example with uh, careless uh, operation with cars or or movement abroad with the credit card mm -hmm. Our partner offered to equip uh, vehicles with a telematic system on the basis of Galileo's car devices. For the project, uh, the full featured modification from our 7X series uh, was chosen. This device supports, uh, supports uh, two CAN buses, so that, that allows to, to connect as, as many built-in sensors of a car as possible. It also supports, uh, the device also has uh, a flexible set of interfaces like serial ports, one wire for uh, RFID readers connections, inputs and outputs for connection of uh, panic button, control, control relay, power relays, etc. Additionally, the device have um, all, Gal all Galileo technology which that, that includes uh, can scanner to, to work with the canvas, a set of uh, echo driving features, and of course, is logic programming. As a, as a result, uh, the device allows to, uh, to set up several features, which are listed on the slide. It's just not a particular feature, but it's about a set of different functional directions. So the first one is notification about changes in critical parameters of the car, which are monitored through the CAN bus. For example, about opening the hood or if uh, the mileage uh, was, cha wa was changed sharply, for example. Driving cell control with echo driving and strike detection with echo driving features. So we can not only determine uh, harsh driving, harsh acceleration, but also um, but also strikes. That is important for insurance history. Remote engine blocking when a driver is trying to travel outside the permitted regions, for example, 
abroad or in case if the payment schedule interrupt in case of the payment schedule interruption of course alerts about gsm and gps jamming in order to prevent uh, thefts notification and alerts about power off and if a client trying to remote to remove sorry to remove the tracking device for this ta for this task in some cars additional 7x trackers i mean uh, addition by addition i mean the second galav sky 7x tracker where, where, um, was installed and he we the hidden installation so when one device is disconnected then the second device uh, is starting to, to send alarms to dispatchers and how the whole system works um on the slide we can see, we can see we have tried to show it with the convenience scheme the tracker so the tracker determines by itself uh, location gps and gsm jamming as well as harsh acceleration braking turns and strikes from the canvas it takes uh, millage speed uh, prompts like millage speed uh, rpm fuel and status of lock and doors then all the data are transferred to dispatchers they analyze incoming notification and alarms history of moving and driving quality make a decision about manual uh, about manual blocking on blocking cars and provides uh, detailed reports to dealership in parallel the device is programmed to block the car automatically in case of violation or send various alarms it surely done it's, it was surely done with easy logic programming so now we gonna show you an example of how such algorithms can be done with easy logic interface michi what you are welcome hey i'm with you again uh so uh, again, I will show you some small algorithm that uh, can help you solve uh, the task of monitoring the driver behavior, uh, notifications, uh, audio not notifications for driver uh, about uh, violation of uh, uh, your limits. And uh, uh, this algorithm also uh, uh, notify your software, your server about uh, violations of uh, your limits. Uh, the algorithm consists of several uh, parts. The first part is uh, checking of parameters. Uh, the second part is checking of uh, limits of the speed. Uh, in this, I think I will show you in the algorithm. It will be <laughs> more convenient uh, to show you in more details uh, this part of the algorithm. So uh, basically, here we check uh, speed limits. Uh, in the third part of the algorithm, we uh, play uh, audio notification about violations and the uh, fourth and uh, the fifth part is for uh, notification you uh, as uh, owner of the vehicle about uh, the uh, about the alarm about the violations uh, so i think i will uh, show you a little bit more details about this algorithm again i need to share my screen give me a second okay 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 uh, yep that's it i think uh, now you should uh, see the algorithm in my configuration software <clears throat> so uh firstly uh, we uh, at the first part of the algorithm after the device starting uh, we uh, checking if the coordinates are available uh, and after after the uh, just gps model started and we receiving actual coordinates uh, we start checking readings from the uh, acceleration uh, angular acceleration and so on uh, i think uh, now we need to explain how the device can detect uh, uh, all these parameters uh, acceleration uh, uh, braking angular acceleration like uh, when you're turning left or right uh, the device uh, has two ways to understand to get this information uh, the first way uh, we actually can this uh, can get this information from the uh, gnss model from the gps readings uh, in this case uh, all these parameters will be calculated uh, from the readings from gps uh, 
this way is convenient in case you have no time for calibration. I will tell you about, about the calibration a bit, little bit later. Uh, when you, you use a GNSS source of information, uh, you just apply the settings and start receiving uh, readings about the driver behavior. But uh, the inconvenience of this method is that uh, in case your vehicle lost GPS signal, for example, in case your vehicle uh, moving inside uh, the tunnel or maybe in underground parking, in this case, you will not receive the, this information and the, your algorithms will not work. Uh, the second way for the device to get uh, driving behavior information is uh, by using the internal device accelerometer. All uh, Galileo Sky devices equipped with internal accelerometer and uh, this accelerometer can be used for uh, getting information about the driver behavior. Uh, but uh, when you use internal accelerometer, there are, uh, have to be be made some preparations. Uh, firstly, you need to fix your uh, Galileo Sky device inside your vehicle because uh, the device should uh, always uh, detect all movements, all accelerations uh, of your vehicle. So uh, the device should be fixed. And once you fix your device, you shouldn't move it uh, because if you move it, if you change the place of the device, uh, you need to start the calibration process again. Uh, so the calibration process itself actually uh, is quite simple for you as a user. Uh, you only need to go to the uh, command page, uh, sorry, and uh, send the command. Uh, sorry, I will show you. Shock zero. Uh, this command uh, will start the calibration process and uh, after sending this command, you just uh, need uh, to use your vehicle. Uh, the calibration process uh, can uh, take uh, from two hours to several days. It depends on the on your vehicle, how often it uh, accelerates, how often your driver use brakes or uh, hash movement like the, like this. So uh, <laughs> please do not panic. It can uh, take some time in case you have a heavy vehicle. Uh, after all, this process will end. Uh, so don't worry. Uh, when <clears throat> Uh, the process ended, you will start receiving information about driver behavior. You can uh, get this uh, information directly in the software uh, at the protocol page uh, in, uh, sorry, I'm always forgetting where this information is. Yes, uh, driving style. When you mark this uh, parameter driving style, uh, you're starting receiving uh, readings from internal acceleration uh, units uh, in your software. So you can uh, use this information directly in your software uh, to detect driver behavior or use this information uh, uh, in easy logic as uh, we do here in our algorithm. So now we know how we getting this information about the driver behavior. So we are receiving information about acceleration uh, and we uh, receive information about angular acceleration. As you can see, we have two uh, to checking of acceleration because uh, when you actually accelerate, you have a positive acceleration. When you push in your brakes, uh, you have negative acceleration. So we have two limits. And uh, this is the same for uh, angular acceleration. In case you turn left, you right, you have a positive acceleration. In case you turn turning left, you have negative acceleration. So again, we have two, uh, two conditions for angular acceleration. Uh, in case uh, our readings, it doesn't matter which of them, uh, is higher than that limit that we have set for these parameters. For example, let's imagine we have uh, harsh acceleration or your driver accelerates too fast and you don't like this. You want to know about this. Uh, so uh, we use uh, user tag as the source of the information about the violation. Uh, for example, in case of harsh acceleration, we use user tag zero. It's a free text for a user that can be used in easy logic. And we write uh, one instead of uh, zero. We place uh, readings one in user tag zero. Uh, when you see this information in software, you know that at this particular point, uh, your driver uh, performed harsh, harsh acceleration. So you, can, you will always know what's going on with your vehicle. Uh, 
and after that we play an audio file uh, and your driver also knows that uh, this violation was detected and uh, this information was sent to the software so after that uh, we uh, save point so you will always know where exactly when exactly this violation occurred and uh, you know the sort of violation it works the same way for all for all, all violations for harsh stock we uh, write two instead of one uh, to the user tag instead of uh, harsh turning you will receive free and uh, uh, now you actually know uh, place and the time and the sort of uh, violation that your driver uh, performed <clears throat> uh, a little bit more interesting uh, this algorithm is for the speed uh, I added uh, some additional information here uh, I need to zoom it in uh, Alena told about uh, using geofences and I think she a little bit forget about uh, uh, one more uh, quite nice and quite helpful thing that uh, our devices can do uh, we can use not only the uh, geofences themselves we can also add several parameters to uh, all geofences and why uh, this fact is so interesting it's because we in these parameters for geofences we can actually add uh, such useful parameters like a speed limit so uh, you don't need to create a big algorithm which change, checks different uh, geofences and so on you actually just check uh, if the speed current speed higher that for example like in my case uh, the geofence property one in geofence property one uh, sorry i need to move it okay uh, in geofence fence property one uh, i placed a speed limit for this particular geofence you can add these limits to all geofences that you have created and instead of uh, creating huge uh, massive algorithm you're just checking uh, this parameter to the uh, the current speed with the parameter uh, for car, uh, current geofence and uh, uh, if this is the, if the current speed is higher than this parameter you will receive information about speed violation uh, here I'm checking if the vehicle inside geofence or not uh, so in this case if the vehicle is inside geofence we check in speed limit with the geofence parameter and uh, checking the speed limit with the limit for this particular uh, geofence in case the vehicle is outside all geofences we uh, check in the speed limit we compare the current speed with the uh, usual speed limit like uh, it might be a uh, speed limit uh, outside your city for example and uh, in case the violation again uh, we using the same user tag zero and uh, write a code four and this code four is for uh, speed violation again we uh, uh, see here a notification about overspeeding so the device actually plays audio file and your driver can hear this audio file oh sorry and uh, uh, after that we again uh, saving point and then uh, remove the mark of the uh, of the violation so every time that your uh, driver uh, make some violations you receive this information in software you know where exactly when exactly the, the uh, violation occurred and you know the sort of violation this uh, simple algorithm uh, in its basic state is actually available in uh, our library of free algorithms you can download this algorithm from our website you can modify it uh, for your tasks and uh, this uh, algorithm is actually a little bit modified <laughs> for this presentation because I thought it might be a little bit interesting for you to use uh, to add some uh, additions but basic idea is the same you can uh, download this algorithm you can modify it and uh, you can use uh, these algorithms these free algorithms as a base for uh, your own algorithm so please uh, feel free to use them I think uh, we will share the link uh, to the library uh, with yeah. you uh, yeah, we'll do it later. Uh, so uh, 
if, and uh, you sorry to interrupt you yes, i think please. that it will be great if we could uh, send the file with this algorithm tomorrow to all our participants maybe. oh no problem it's a nice I idea send <laughs> file with your modified version and yes. maybe a few your, of your comments yeah absolutely okay. no problem uh, uh, i think i also saw uh, the question about uh, about the uh, blocking the engine uh, in case that vehicle is outside the geo fence. Uh, so uh, it's actually also simple. You can check uh, if your vehicle is inside geo fence, uh, and in case the vehicle is outside, you can just uh, change the state of your output. Uh, basically, use the same algorithm. So uh, I think if you have uh, questions. We can discuss it later, maybe in uh, scope of some support ticket. Please feel free to contact uh, our support team. I think I will explain you, share some uh, algorithms, some examples, how to solve this task. It's quite easy. I think uh, it will be more convenient to you uh, to contact uh, like uh, directly with our support team or with me directly uh, as it was convenient for you. Uh, so if you have any questions uh, about this algorithm, about easy logic, uh, please feel free to ask uh, maybe in chat. I will return to chat and I will be available for you. And uh, we also could return back to this algorithm later if, you have, if new questions appear. Okay. Yeah. So, I don't know. One. So let's return to our presentation. And uh, following the that Dmitry said, we have uh, we are always glad to guide you all Galileo users about EasyLogic opportunity, opportunities. We have several uh, really, really great uh, resources which which can help to learn you to learn EasyLogic opportunities. Uh, first of all, uh, as Mitri said, we have our library of uh, ready to use uh, or template algorithms on our website. It's about the, it's about this, uh, uh, this link code to EasyLogic templates, the section with EasyLogic uh, templates on our website. You always can download them or contact, contact uh, customers who created such templates because not, not all of them are created by, by our engineers and if you need some questions some comments about any uh, about any particular algorithm you're always welcome to to text so we have a, a chat on our website so you might text there uh, for example Dmitry or I or someone from our colleagues could advise you about these templates we also have a very good scope of knowledge uh, to start working with, to start creating your own algorithms, which is called EasyLogic Basic. This is our online, let's call it our online EasyLogic school. This is an uh, online course, uh, include, which includes, um, I'm not sure about number of lessons, but it includes several lessons dedicated to all steps of algorithms creation from simple, very, very simple drag and drop algorithms and ending by uh, scripts which can, uh, scripts which are used to integrate external devices, for example. So a really good scope of knowledge. If you, we also can give you a certificate, a certificate when you when you pass this course. Just arrange a test and we, our specialists from our technical support. This course is absolutely online and free, so everyone can go through it uh, at any time. EasyLogic tab. Um, Dmitry, uh, previously, Dmitry has shown uh, the EasyLogic tab on our configurator program. Uh, this uh, tab uh, is open all the time without, it's available even without a connected Galaxy device. So you can practice with algorithms created even now. The configurator software is available on our website. You can download them all the time. And if you don't have uh, enough time to study the full Easy Logic Basic course, we have a very, we have a series of convenient short videos on our YouTube channel, which is called Easy Logic Creators course. It's about maybe several, uh, maybe about, about, maybe about 20 video, short videos on our YouTube channels, channel by different uh, 
by different features, by different algorithm sections. So really, really convenient, really easy to really convenient to start working with algorithms. And of course, if you need any advice, if you need more, if you need an individual training, you're always welcome. You can even type now in the chat if you would like to arrange an individual individual workshop with Mitri. We could contact you tomorrow this week to, to schedule it with you and to give to to give you the full view of programming capabilities. It's really not very difficult. You don't need to have any programming backgrounds. Just it's just called easy logic. So um, I think we could we are ready to finish our presentation right now. And I just like to remind you that, that um, we will be glad to tell you more about easy logic opportunities and how users can benefit with Galileo Sky. Personally, if you are planning to be the, the SacroX expert this month. Please type in the chat if you would like to arrange a meeting in one of the expert days. I will definitely contact you tomorrow so that could schedule it. With this, we would like to end our presentation for today. And now we have some time to answer your questions. Uh, let me check if we have uh, if we have any question in the question tab in the question tab now there are no but i see that there is a very active uh, dialogue on our chat let's check the messages mm. yes we will send the link with the record to all participants it will be sent automatically tomorrow morning and if it might be interesting i could also share this presentation together with the file with the file of algorithm that Mitri show, showing you previously. Uh, just uh, uh, let me know in the chat and I will send you all the files tomorrow. Mm. So the question from the call, the question from Mr. Nuno, we are not there yet, but we want to implement an algorithm to block engine once the car is outside the set in Jeffens or set Defenses. Can you guide us toward this or point over some material that will help us with this? So, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, I will send you the information, uh, the script, and maybe links to a few manuals which could guide you through this through the settings and then we could arrange an individual workshop for you where Dmitry will show you or someone else from our engineers engineering team uh, could show you our configurator program and give you some brief introduction about general settings about the work with the canvas and work with algorithms uh, the question from amado if i understand you don't need an external mobilizer with a block engine is it done directly from the tracker 7x yes exactly uh, it's possible to connect uh, the power relay and use it to control the engine so uh, we have a few manuals uh, about uh, release connection. I could also send it to you if it might be useful. So, um, yeah, I also saw comments from Dmitry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. The question from Mr. Mousen. To remotely lock the motor, it's necessary to install two relays because I installed one relay to activate the driver with a button and I need to block the engine in case of that. So, Dmitri, could you please maybe connect... Oh, I see your, uh, your question, but could you please yeah, connect uh, us yeah, and yeah, maybe comment I, I believe I already uh, answered. Uh, in case you have a relay already installed, uh, you can actually manipulate uh, the same relay uh, with easy logic and uh, it might be... Uh, huge list of different conditions it might be uh, maybe uh, some command from the software to enable the vehicle or or it might be uh, uh, for example key activation key uh, it might be even uh, some combination of this uh, event for example firstly you need to send the command from the software and after that the, the driver should attach 
uh, the key. You can even add some, I don't know, uh, key on the keyboard. It depends on your task. With Easy Logic, you can uh, actually do almost everything. And uh, the I believe the hardest part is to like formulate the task uh, and uh, think uh, what uh, else you can do, what else you can imagine, uh, what scenario is better for you for your client, uh, and then uh, it. After that, it's much easier to uh, create the algorithm which solve this task. Yeah, and I also see a question, Mr. Mosin, about the personal training. Uh, I will text you tomorrow morning so we could agree on individual training and maybe discuss this task in more detail and show how it can be done. So, uh, the next question is from Amado regarding the co um, regarding the comments through the canvas. I also saw Dmitry, you responded to it, but let's discuss it. Yeah, it's fun to tell now. Uh, power relay is why uh, the contacts are usually done, but for count requests, we don't know the comment to the engine block. Is it the same with all CAN versions? Is it feasible through the telematics platform? If yes, which one? Could it be automated in an algorithm directly implemented in the GPS tracker device? So. Uh, yes, it can be done uh, for, with the trackers uh, without, it doesn't matter which software, which monitoring platform to use. One more important question that should be mentioned when we're talking about the CAN bus is that uh, each case is individual. Different vehicles manufacturer provides, uh, use different uh, account protocols in their account bus. They provide di different sets of parameters there. And of course, they use a different uh, set of commands to control the account bus. It's even not about different manufacturer, but it can be a set of parameters and, com it, and commands can even uh, differ for vehicles of the same model but different years of production so each each case should be checked carefully individually that's great if you have an access to uh, technical documentation of vehicle manufacturer so uh, if you don't we can try to arrange some uh, let's call them experiments with the can bus when we do some actions with, with car and try to extract and fi find out, find and extract uh, the required parameters from the CAN bus. On our website, we, uh, uh, we have uh, the list of vehicles which we already uh, have some experience with, and there are some parameters that we were succeed to extract from from the CAN bus. But any case should be tested individually. Additionally, from our side, we are always ready to help you. Our engineers could connect to your machinery remotely and and help to perform experiments with the canvas or record log for further parsing. Uh, sorry, Elena, I think I also uh, need to add some information. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, if you have some equipment uh, that can uh, send uh, proper commands to the CAN bus or your vehicle, it might be uh, some external, for example, uh, car security system, uh, which can be uh, manipulated. And uh, if you can force the system to send the command to block the uh, engine of your vehicle and start it again, we actually can listen this information with our equipment and then use this information uh, to later to manipulate your vehicle directly with, without uh, this request from uh, the third party equipment. But uh, you know, it's more like uh, exception, exceptional case because uh, sometimes it might be hard to find, to find uh, such equipment. And again, Alena, uh, absolutely right. Uh, the information in the CAN bus is quite often uh, different different in different model of the same manufacturer and we mm -hmm. even have uh, some experience with the vehicles of uh, uh, the same model and even the same manufacturer here and we have experience when we can we have three different uh, three different uh, uh, like versions of the data in the CAN bus for the same vehicle so uh, it is uh, necessary to be careful with uh, the CAN bus it's necessary to check everything twice or uh, even several times before uh, use some solution based on the CAN bus uh, it is not so uh, 
you know bad when you speak about the heavy equipment in heavy equipment it a uh, little bit uh, easier but again you should be always careful uh, when you planning to use some canvas uh, like uh, uh, canvas solutions it's uh, better to previously check everything and only after that apply these solutions yeah thank you thank you Niti. uh so I also see the question from Mr. Graham. Th thank you, thank you for this. And so, and the new question from Amador: Would it be possible to have a list of pickles and models with the canvas that would like would work with your device to implement blocking of engine? So, if we are using, if we're talking about uh, engine control by release, there is no any restriction. You can install the solution at any vehicle. It doesn't matter. If we are talking about the commands sent to about a bl uh, blocking engine with commands for the canvas, then it's much more complicated. Unfortunately, there is no any any ready to use database of vehicles uh, on the market. So it should be checked individually for for you uh, for your car's model. If you have a list of models which are we interested, then you could share with us, and we we will ch check. Maybe we have some experience with them. Uh, question from Mr. Mosin: Can we check? Uh, can we connect the Galaxy Seven directly to the car's can bus that is in the list that counts on our website as an example and exhibition? Uh, yes, why not? Uh, Galileo Sky 7X devices have interfaces, uh, CAN H, CAN L, to, to be connected directly to the CAN bus wires with, um, with wires cutting. The full featured uh, 7X modification also supports two CAN buses, so it might be useful when uh, talking about so CAN, bu CAN buses in trucks or heavy machinery because sometimes their number is higher. And then and regarding cars provided in our list in our database we have um, uh, if a vehicle is available in our in in our database that means that we already we have already created some algorithm for can bus parsing for this model then we can uh, we can send you proper command to upload this algorithm and try to parse, uh, try to test the, we can test this algorithm with your vehicles for some time. It's not sure. I could, I think uh, we could discuss it uh, oh, during right. individual thing, maybe. Sorry, Lena, may I add some information uh, yeah. again? Uh, I think. Uh, it might be also helpful for you if you have uh, 7x devices with uh, firmware 38 uh, in these devices we actually have a can database which is available for us it's also available mm -hmm. for you uh, if i think we can show this if you don't mind it will take several seconds uh, so i need to share my screen again i think it might be interesting for you uh, here we go. I think now you can see my screen. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, my device already have installed uh, 38 firmware and in the CAN scanner setting we have this uh, magic box uh, where you can actually uh, find your, I think it was Mitsubishi L200 Mitsubishi L200 and the uh, manufacturing gear. After that when you choose these parameters to find your vehicle you can just push this button, uh, show parameters, and after that, uh, the list of the information that is already known for us, uh, it's also available for you here in comments. You can see uh, the information that is was found by us, by, what, or maybe by our client, or we together might find some information. And this information uh, can be used, uh, <laughs> is available for all our clients now. Uh, just use 7X devices with firmware 38. So the eight, uh, you can just uh, add these parameters as uh, can take uh, and can text for necessary information, apply settings, and after that, this information uh, will be automatically set to your software or can be used in the easy logic scripts. It's easy like this. 
uh, unfortunately for uh, all the devices this uh, function is unavailable but with 7x you can use this information freely so I that's think... good for me too. thank you for sharing so uh if there are any other questions you would like to discuss right now or maybe there are specific tasks you would like to ask about right now just we have uh, a few minutes extra few minutes to to discuss them so please welcome okay if there are no new questions i think we could finish for today Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you for your time. We hope this workshop was, this webinar was useful for you. Um, on the border at the top, uh, we have contact details. Please feel free to, to reach our team anytime for, with any questions. We are always ready to help. And I have uh, one more question from Mr. Amado right now in the chat. Um, could you, mm -hmm. Well, Michi, uh, can we discuss this? Uh, I think it's just, okay. So we, uh, we could try to find some information about, uh, about it tomorrow and discuss it later via mail and for example, our direct meeting. Um, sure. Uh... Yes, I think, uh, sorry, Elena, I think uh, you can always uh, send the list of vehicles that you are interested in uh, to our support email. We will check our databases, uh, search for information and maybe provide uh, the information that we have found uh, for you in the email. It, I think it's much more convenient uh, to get this information in email. This information will be always available for you later. Oh, and also, Dmitry, there is a message from Mr. Hefford as do regarding uh, the fuel level. So could you please address? Uh, so I think I can share you the screen again. Uh, so, uh, yes, last screen I can see. Uh, so fuel level. Can it also show fuel level used after trip? uh in this case i'm afraid no we have uh, only uh readings about the actual fuel level uh it doesn't mean that we uh have no no this information uh in the canvas i believe it can be found if uh the basic idea if uh, this information is presented in the canvas you can find this information i uh, actually strongly recommend you to watch our uh, can pro tutorial uh, it's a series of 10 videos 10 short videos just spend one hour and i think you uh, will know at least 95 uh, percent of all necessary information to uh, uh, about the canvas which will help you to use our products uh, and uh, find to search, search for the information the canvas manually use uh, standard filters uh, i strongly recommend to check uh, this tutorial i think uh, i don't know if we'll also share you uh, the link to this guide uh, it's very helpful we spent a lot of time uh, collecting this information and i think it's quite helpful and uh, uh, please uh, spend one hour watch this video uh, guide uh, so <laughs> alena and as usual, we always we, we we are always glad to to advise you with your questions and share more details, more technical details about this. So the last chance to ask a question if you have them now. <laughs> so, okay. In this case, let's uh, let's finish. Uh, of a webinar for today as i promised i will contact everyone who asked about this in the chat uh we will also send the file of algorithm Dmitry showed in 
show to you in a mail additionally if it might be useful as well as this presentation and we'll be glad to follow up on our conversation this week and maybe schedule a meeting on the expo if someone from you are planning to visit this, this event we will be pleased to meet you personally so thank you for your attention thank you for your time and thank you for joining us thank you and we'll be in touch. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.